everybody. It's been a while since I've uh, posted an article on mountain high motoring, but I thought today on my commute home I'd uh, put out a little blurb out there for you. Today is my son Cooper's second birthday, and uh, as you know, uh, I have two boys. Cooper's two, and my other son Bentley is nine months old. I've convinced my wife to name all our kids after cars, at least to some point, and uh, decided that my favorite name, if she would let me for our next boy, would be Tucker. And uh, a lot of people, when I say I'd like to name our next boy Tucker, they say, that's not a car, what's, what's, a, what's a Tucker? And actually it is, and uh, it's one of my favorite cars ever made. I've only seen one in real life, and I believe it was worth over a million dollars. It was uh, built in 1948 by a man who uh, basically built it in his garage and uh, got the funding to, to build it to compete with the likes of Chevrolet and, and Ford and Chrysler. And uh, he named it the, the Tucker 48. In 1948 it was the Tucker. And uh, they eventually ended up calling it the Tucker Torpedo. And uh, the gentleman that built the Tucker was uh, kind of an uh, industrial uh, entrepreneur, inventor. He, he created a lot of vehicles for the military, um, and uh, but he wanted to create a, a luxury car that we could compete with with the, with the big three in Detroit. And the reason I love the Tucker so much is it was um, kind of the American dream car. That this, this guy built it in his garage. Uh, only 50 ended up being made, but because he got muscled out by the big three, the big three had their own steel mills, they had a lot of resources to build the cars, they had plants full of workers, but uh, Tucker built his car from scratch with a handful of guys, and uh, the, the media and really went out of their way to, to ruin him, and they eventually did. Um, they took him to court and said that he was uh, spending government money that, um, on a car that he was supposed to be making, but that he wasn't. And, and uh, he, in fact, to kind of rub it in their faces, although he didn't get put out of business, he was supposed to build 50 Tucker 48s to meet his quota to, to get the backing that he needed to be a, an actual uh, manufacturer, and uh, they did all they could not to, but to, uh, the, the big three did all they could to sabotage him, but he did come through and produce all 50 cars, and uh, at least according to the movie, who knows if it was Hollywood or not, but they brought all 50 cars to the court hearing, and uh, they were beautiful cars. They were uh, really sleek, the back slanted down, the engine was in the back, uh, I believe it was actually originally a boat motor and uh, had, had quad, it was a quad exhaust and uh, it actually may have been six exhausts actually that came out the back but it was the first car to have a padded dash, first car to have seat belts, first car to have uh, four wheel disc brakes I believe. Uh, it had a windshield that if you would wreck it was designed to pop out rather than collapse in on you and shout you with glass it would pop out. Um, it, they completed a lot of, of uh, testing with it. It was going to be a pretty reliable car. But unfortunately they weren't able to, to develop it. But uh, I'm going to post some pictures on the blog uh, on the Talk Tucker 48 so you can see what it's like. Um, and I'll write a little story on it. But it's a uh, really a really neat car. Uh, the one that I saw was in the LeMay Museum in Tacoma, Washington. Yeah, really pretty pearl blue color. But uh, another cool thing about the Tucker 48 is it had three headlights, one in the middle that was connected to the steering wheel that would turn with the wheels uh, to help with lighting around corners. So a lot, of, a lot of cars do that today. BMW's Lexus does that. Um, but it was the first of its kind in, in so many ways, uh, which is why I'd like to name, if I have another son, Tucker. But anyway, we'll have a Tucker up on the mountain high motoring here in the future for you to look at.